Remember how last time I said which game was coming next? Well, it turns out I forgot Halloween is coming. Now, in the past, I used to worry about prophesizing the next episode because plans could change. But now I'm learning it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. So if nothing matters, I'm going all in on Halloween. So hey, welcome to the Halloween episode of the Game Dungeon. Now, I love the original Diablo. It has a great spooky feel to it. For a while, I would even play it each October, but I eventually got kind of Diabloed out. However, I'm always on the lookout for a game that gives me that Diablo feel. Well, we may have one this year with clans. The screenshots were giving me that vibe, so let's check it out. Centuries before, in a darker age, the enemy, a demon, a demon. came into the land and drove a wedge between the clans. Through foul machinations, he and his minions pitted the clans against one another, and he thrived on the corruption and the chaos. Or so the legend told us. Okay, we have another story that doesn't matter. They're just making this up as they go. And unlike The Chosen, this narrator only has small levels of awkwardness. So this might be what I'll sound like in my old age. And we prospered under the watchful eye of the elders. But we took the peace for granted. I'm digging the 90s Blizzard look to the cinematics, though. I'm getting a Diablo or Warcraft vibe here. I mean, come on. That part looks like the orc victory scene from Warcraft, too. Yeah, I'm seeing similarities. Yeah, this is similar to the point where it's beyond coincidence. This is like when an indie game on Steam is intentionally copying the style of a better known game. Except this came out in 99. It's ahead of its time. Sounds like we've got our Diablo clone. Let's go. Ah, what class? Well, I'm thinking dwarf. Now what's interesting is you can re-roll your character stats like old school tabletop RPGs. But uh, I don't want to have to deal with gaming the stats. Let's just go with the default. And we start off in an ominous forest. Well, this looks cool, but we're in the land of oversized HUDs again. So here's what we're going to do. Even though that face at the bottom looks pretty wicked, I'd rather make this more immersive for you guys. So I'll do some editing magic here so you can still see my health bar and have a full screen for everything. Oh yeah, that's nicer. Man, now I'm jealous. You're getting the better experience. Okay, goblin, it's time to clean up these woods. Oh, shift attack doesn't work. There's no attacking in place like Diablo. That means these fights are gonna get sloppy. Okay. Now the game does have a map key and it works later, but not here. Eh, I have a certain level of respect for games that just throw you in there without explaining anything, as long as you don't have to do anything too complicated. I'm able to move and attack. That's more than I can say for a lot of Commodore 64 games. Well, the goblins are chipping away at me. I find a tree, can't do anything to it. Okay. <laughs> hey, I know that sound. They used that in the Warcraft 3 expansion. In fact, this game has a few sound effects I've heard before in other games. Be on the lookout for titles popping up in the corner when I hear one that I recognize from elsewhere, too. Yeah, if I try to avoid the goblins, that's not gonna cut it. They'll chase you from screen to screen, so you just have to deal with them. Getting low on life here. Whoops, was that your arm? This is a snarky dwarf. Potion! Ah. Help me please, young warrior. Perhaps we have a common enemy in the demon. The demon? Hey, it's the narrator! He's trapped in the water and says he needs us to destroy his spellbook or he's screwed. Well, to be fair, this guy really does look like somebody who needs help. This is more compelling than just some villager telling you to find their locket or something. Aha! An axe! Now we're cooking with... an axe? Let's go. Oh man, they're mobbing me. One health. And I'm dead. Yeah, he looks like it too. Okay, I'd have to call that my typical old school RPG experience. Minus the real time combat. A lot of old RPGs, this is pretty much the way they go for me. Steadily draining life, a little bit of help, but not nearly enough. No obvious way out of it, then death. Let's try again. I guess let's try another class, see if that was the problem. 
Let's go the complete opposite. The elf is good at magic. Let's see what that's all about. Well, it's not bad, but we burn through mana in seconds, then we're back to the sword again. Now, your mana does recharge, but I can see what's going to happen here. I'm pretty sure this is balanced so that you have to stop and wait in between each fight to get that mana back up. No. I've had enough of that stop and wait gameplay in other RPGs. That's too bad because his swordsmanship is nothing special. Yeah, we're not gonna make it. Yeah, he's dead. Now if I were smart, I'd go with the Barbarian at this point because he has the most meat on him to run through the grinder. But mm, I kind of want to play the Dwarf. But what am I gonna do? The combat was a little random, but I don't think I made any obvious mistakes there. Well, I answered my own question. I didn't make any big mistakes, and the combat was kind of random. So we need to rectify one of those things. Thankfully, I have a secret weapon. I can save my game anywhere and reload. I'm not sure there's any trick to the combat. You can't block, it's just you go in there and hope for the best. See, watch. Here, this guy takes a big bite out of me. But if I reload, this time I get him without a scratch. So right away, the game's incentivizing me to save and reload after almost every encounter. That's not really fun, but I guess it beats a game over, huh? I mean, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I've gone over this more times than you're seeing in the video, and the only way I can progress is to take some of the randomness out of the random attacks with constant saving and reloading. You know how some speedrunners will only try to get the best time for each level, then chain them together in a video to come up with a theoretical best time for the whole game? Well, this is a lot like that, except I'm just doing this to play the game? Okay? Well, it works. Sort of. I can clear out the house now. I find the spell book, but I need to destroy it. Throw it in the fireplace? There's a fireplace here. The book? A flame? Uh... I feel dumb. I can't figure it out. I'm trying every combination I can think of. Maybe I'm supposed to destroy it another way? There's nothing in the forest except some goon, and then it infinitely loops back on itself. What am I... Oh no. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, a stick from the door I busted in. Yeah, it's so obvious. How did I miss that? Uh. Yeah, that did it. That was complete dumb luck for me. This feels a little cheap. You are a, you are a kind soul, my friend. Thank, thank you. Okay, so he's just saying he wants me to go kill the demon and everyone standing in the way. Got it. Well, I can think of something standing in my way. That tree. Not so tough against an axe, are you? You know, I thought I made a mistake by not picking the barbarian, but look at this. Guess who has the most points in axe? Yeah, get the axe. Well, we make our way inside a castle and come to a barrel puzzle. Don't worry about this, dwarf. I'll figure this out. You just worry about splitting skulls with your axe. Well, I solve the puzzle and start wandering the dungeon and make progress, but once again, my health is getting low. I find a vendor with some health potions for sale, but I'm nothing but a broke dwarf. Yeah, a broke dead dwarf. Now, I actually have an extra life because the wizard threw me a couple for rescuing him, but that sends me all the way back. I think we're talking five minutes of walking and I lose my inventory. Not worth it. Gotta save and load more compulsively. Could you please help me out of here? Uh, sure, I'll help you. Ooh. I'm smart. Yeah, I'm smart. I can't even tell if the dwarf is being sarcastic or not. Well, I hope he's getting help down in the pit of fire or wherever we sent him to. Now there is a puzzle to solve here, but we're missing a lever. Thankfully, there's a lever on the rack here. Wait a minute, shouldn't I just cut the rope? That wouldn't make more sense? Oh, uh, okay. We got the lever. I guess we're leaving him here. I'm the hero. Well, this puzzle isn't much of one. It's just raw trial and error. There were no hints anywhere. Five levers means 32 combinations. Kind of lame, guys. Well, after puzzle solving and inciting the wrath of everyone, I make it to the Underdark. Wait, 
Isn't that name copyrighted by Dungeons and Dragons? Eh, maybe not. Well, this cave area is pretty rad, but I have to wonder if they didn't cut to the good stuff too early. This kind of reminds me of the caves in Diablo, and you don't reach them until you're one step away from hell itself. If you're deep in the earth with lava everywhere, where do you take things from there? Now, I keep moving cautiously and saving, but I'm finding that's not good enough. I keep getting whittled down by all these enemies and dying. Health is a scarce commodity. Well, I have one more trick up my sleeve. Make a map. Yeah, these caves are kind of extensive. Now again, the game does have an auto map, but there are some places you just shouldn't go. You really can't map out everything in game and expect to live, but you can with a piece of paper. I checked. I couldn't find an existing map online, so I might be breaking ground here. I'm not thrilled about having to do this, but this game is feeling a little old school, and sometimes this is what it would take. It's necessary though, because say you come to an intersection, you have no idea what's down each path, so you have to find out. But if you have a map, then your way becomes clear. I think the game really is expecting you to play this way, because they're just too stingy with resources otherwise. Also, even though this is an RPG, there's no leveling up. You don't get experience for killing anything, and the vast majority of enemies don't drop any loot. So there's no benefit at all to getting in a fight if you can avoid it. And remember, you can't run away. If you take a wrong turn and the enemy spots you, he'll chase you room after room after room. They don't give up. So your only recourse to conserve health is to just never let them spot you in the first place. And for that, you need a map. Well, either that or play the elf and spend hours waiting for your mana to recharge. Although, you know what? I appreciate the honesty. I'm drawing a blank on which games do this, but I know I've seen RPGs that have enemies where if you fight most of them, even though they give you experience, which helps you level up, they take too much of your health and if you fight too many of them, you're just gonna die. So you have to pick and choose which enemies to fight to get that optimal ratio of experience gain versus damage taken. Except you don't know which ones those are. So it just feels bad. Feel free to chime in if you've seen games like that. I know I'm not imagining this. So Clans is not doing that. It's very clear you should avoid fighting when you can. Well, with my exquisitely detailed map, I'm back to progressing. Wait, what? No game. No, no, no. Look at that, it glitched out. See, earlier I just walked through the tunnel. Now it's blocked by nothing. Not cool, game. Wow, these saves are important. And I said it already, but I really want to emphasize how random this combat is. See, here I am fighting an orc. He takes all my health except one point. So I reload, same fight, and now I'm left with three quarters of my health. No difference in strategy whatsoever. The combat's just that deadly combination of clunky and fast. Wait, the store's locked? That's a problem. As you can see on my amazing map, I've cleared out this entire area. This is the only way left. I'm stuck, guys. Well, I gave it a full effort. But I checked, and thankfully I was able to find one walkthrough for this game. In German. Hi, Mogul Power. Haven't seen you since the cave world. Yeah, this game is called Satanica in Germany. That's a much better name, honestly. Underdark. Okay, something about lava tubes? Repair the path. I did that. I was disappointed by the effects there. It doesn't even cover the hole, really. Wait, a blacksmith in the west? I haven't seen that. What is that? Nothing on my map? Well, let's check the west side. Now you notice some gaps, but I have those accounted for on my map. Wait, no, not that one. The game map shows a path I missed. How did that happen? Oh, it's a hidden wall. I can't break it. Oh, I've been ignoring magic, but it looks like I needed some. Yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking with explosives. I like the skull embedded into the rock here. These are perfectly acceptable fantasy caves. I make it to that blacksmith the guy was talking about, and I like the level of shame in his voice that he's not a better fighter. 
See, I'm good at making weapons, but I cannot use them very well. It's okay, man. Well, he wants me to go get back some bars of gold. Yeah, I bet he does. That leads me to a sub-area that is rather punitive. I scout ahead because I'm just gonna be reloading the game anyway, but it just gets ugly. Then it hits me. If I return the gold to him, he says he'll make a sword for me. A sword. I'm an axe man. I don't need to do any of this. How about I skip this and stay alive? That's a great idea. Use the axe. His neighbor is nice though and gives me a health potion and raises my maximum health. The lady in a deep underground forgotten lava cave that cares. Well, I find the key, head all the way back to open the door, and it's more lava caves, which means more maps. Seriously, that's the only way to do this unless you want to memorize it. I mean, here are the lava caves. I mean, the Underdark. If you take too many wrong turns, you're gonna die. This is getting a little old because it means every time I go somewhere new, I have to save, run through all the caves as far as I can until I die, review the footage and update the map, then load the game and go through it all again going a different path, then finally load the game to go the optimal way. Rinse and repeat. It kind of sucks, but it's just slightly annoying more than anything else. The rest of the lava caves are more the same, though here I actually got the orc to stop chasing me. I have no idea why. Well, small miracles. Maybe it's because this is the one place I can escape him because there's a portal up ahead and he won't come through it. So yeah, I can see this game giving you a break in the one spot you don't need it. Well, I eventually make it through and head onward. The Chambers of Torment. Well, this is kind of like the catacombs from Diablo. Yeah, it's just some dungeon. This is less impressive than the caves. Oh well. Hey, it's that wizard again. I have something that should aid you in your quest. Something to aid me on my quest, huh? Ring of the Axe, my man! He understands me, that's great. Well, this is your typical dungeon. Lots of jail cells, ripped fat guy corpse. They also add skeletons, which aren't as bad as the orcs, but they're still bad. And again, it's the same crap. Scout out everything, maybe a couple times, then load my game and go the right way. I mean, look at this. There are five skeletons waiting for you in this room if you just wander in here. And you don't need to go here. Its only purpose is to hurt you. But now even my map is failing me because I've explored every room. Now, just to prove it to you, I had enough health to clear out every room on the game's auto map. I'm sure as hell not going to save it this way, but as you can see, no exits anywhere. We really are in prison. So, uh, I'm stuck again. There's nothing here. Mogul Power, help me. Do you have the dealer found? Stand on the plate on the left from him. Oh my god, there it is. Ugh. This is some low-grade adventure game bullshit. And if that looks obvious to you, remember, you're watching the nice version. Here's how it looks completely unedited in-game. Whatever, I'll take it. We're still moving forward. Which means there is ever more mapping to be done. We go through some caves without lava? Back up into another prison? It's a little copy and paste, but the game maintains its mood. It just kind of keeps going on forever, though. Though I do get some better armor and a better axe in the process. Use the axe. But even the axe isn't enough though. If you let these bastards out of their cages, they'll kill you like that. There's also a badass in plate armor that you need to kill, but he's not as bad. Now you're getting the abridged version, but I want to show you how much you kind of don't want to die in this game. Even if you have the lives. Let's say I die to the knight or whoever here. A very possible outcome. That means I go all the way back here in the game. Not pretty, guys. After I kill him, he drops a sword, bah, and a key. But it's only one key. Where's the other one? I literally plotted out every room in this level. I didn't see a key. Well, I started backtracking, and by sheer dumb luck, 
I decided to click on the debris of these barrels I smashed? No visual indicator whatsoever. I was just guessing. And there it is. I want to say 99% of the times the barrels are empty, so I just stopped doing it. I was looking here just as a pure stab in the dark. So here's the other key. Invisible in a barrel in one hallway out of a hundred. Well, you do random things long enough, sometimes you get lucky. The commoner's quarters. Looks a lot like the chambers of torment so far. Well, this is new. Hello. I'm making very special soup. <laughs> but I can't find garlic here in kitchen. You go out in garden and get me some, will you? Yeah, this may be the first game I've played with a Swedish orc chef. Borka Bork, okay, in the garden there's a hard ass orc waiting to maul me. Time to reload and scout elsewhere. But elsewhere, it's just a bunch of dungeon and locked doors and a key which doesn't unlock any of them. And we're in dead end territory again. Now, I actually have a theory of what to do next, but it doesn't seem right. Because back in the garden, there are two pressure plates that I'm assuming will open this locked gate. Nothing happens if you drop items on them. So the only thing I'm thinking is to lure the orcs in here, position them just right, then kill them so they turn into stone, but don't shatter them. But I feel like this can't be it because I've already killed the orcs in the level. Let us consult mogul power. Lure two orcs on it and kill the- okay, okay. So pretend for a moment I hadn't been scouting ahead every single region and had just been playing this like a normal game. If I had simply cleared out the rooms prior to this, in other words, kill the enemies as they rush at me to kill me, then I would have screwed myself and there would be no way to finish the game. And I wouldn't know that. Imagine if I saved over my game after clearing out the enemies. That's a normal thing to do. I am keenly aware of when a game allows me to permanently screw myself with no warning. Ever since the Sierra days, that's burned into me. It really creates the specific feeling in me whenever I see a game do this. It's hard to explain. It's like a combination of instant disappointment and also realizing you need to be tougher. You can't be nice or considerate at all anymore. You know how the prison system tries to separate violent offenders from non-violent ones? Well, I feel like I just discovered we have a violent one here. I thought he was gonna behave himself, but he just pulled a knife on one of the guards. Okay, now I know what kind of game we're dealing with. Guess I'll load my game. Yeah, I think the game and I understand each other now. It crossed a line I wasn't expecting, but I know how to handle these kinds of games. You know, by 1999, most adventure games had stopped pulling this crap. So this would have been a blast from the past even then. Well, I lure the first orc on there, but man, the big one took a bite out of me. And I almost shattered the statue by accident. Then I have to bring the second one all the way over here. I finally got him into position, but... Oh, man. <sighs> You know what? I'm actually going to burn the life. It's going to take too long to get them both back into position again, and there's no guarantee I'll do any better the next time. This is actually the first time in the game so far I feel like dying is worth it. Yep, that did it. Get the garlic, the chef gives me the key. And from here, it's just a lot of hallways. I think it might actually be smaller, but this feels longer than the previous areas because those happen more in stages whereas this loops back on itself more. I like the mounted water lizard thing in the corridor here. I also like how we get a body cutaway between rooms. Breaks the fourth wall slightly, but it looks cool. These rooms see through all. Lot of scouting, lot of mapping. I'm skipping ahead maybe an hour of gameplay, but you can kind of see everything you're missing. We do run into a wizard. He hurts, but looks like he didn't have a spell for healing an ax to the face. Or the crotch, I guess. Here's a portal, but it just leads back to more looping corridors. This goes on and on. Now we end up with more barrel puzzles again, and I have to admit, these are pretty good. I kept trying to rack my brain around them, but just couldn't figure them out. Damn, normally I'm good at cracking this sort of thing. I'm ashamed to say I can't see the solution. Then it hit me. They did it again. The answer wasn't even in the room. 
They want me to lure more orcs in here and bash them in place again. The barrels were just a diversion. And yes, you can screw yourself here too. Look, they even have one outside the entrance blocking your way. So of course you kill him on your way to entering the room. This game, damn it. Well, this makes me even more paranoid about staggering my save files. Just in case I screw myself along the way. And speak of the devil, I feel vindicated I caught this next part on video. Watch. I was trying to get a good run with the wizard since I had scouted things out. Here, we'll go to full view. I want you to see this. So I saved my game just before going in there. I am not editing a thing. This is exactly how it happened. I tried some explosives to see if that was more effective. It didn't work out so well, so I tried to load my game and look at that. Look, it's gone. The save file is gone. The one I just made. Here they are, side by side. Poof. I tried quitting the game and coming back in case it was a visual glitch. Nope. That shit is gone. You saw me make the save. Gamer dementia. And they would have gotten away with it too if I hadn't been recording. Looks like we've got another game trying to make me think I'm crazy. But the video doesn't lie. Busted, you son of a bitch! Trick or treat on me this year! Trying to slip some razor blades into the apples, huh? Good thing I saved a few minutes earlier. Well, things were relatively painless after that, except for this room. And another trial and error trap. Damn it. And just from me getting lost, because one of the downsides to making a map on paper is you run against the edge. So you have to continue it elsewhere, then it gets confusing. You're getting the patched up version here in the video. The irony is the game has the same problem. See, if I walk down this door, ta-da, new area, except it's not. It's just a maze. This portal looks cool, it must be the answer. And indeed it is, the Garden of Eternity. Ooh. The Garden of Eternity is not bad. It's huge, but it doesn't have a confusing layout. Plus, I dare say it's so generous with the supplies that this is the first map you can actually play the game normally and live. Not that you should do that, because we might need those supplies later, we don't know. In fact, one of the more tedious aspects of this level is hacking away at all the bushes to ensure you find the hidden loot. This is... not that fun, but I'm at least making a note of it on my map so I don't have to mow the lawn twice. I mean, it's possible I don't even need to do this, but I'm just sort of hedging my bets that I might need the money later. So while this is taking me more time, I'm making a gamble that this will take less time than reloading the game from here if I make it to the end and don't have the supplies I need. If that happens, doesn't matter. I'm taking no chances with clans. We already know this game is just waiting to ruin me. Also, I have to point out that while I was complaining about the jungle music in the last episode, here, it's pretty good. Not that this is a jungle, but this music would sure work for one. Really, all the music in this game I would file as decent. Not amazing, but it helps for every stage. It's high quality, too. It came out as CD audio tracks. That's more than I can say for Diablo. Okay, Diablo, and especially the sequels, got huge, right? I want to say the first opportunity the public had to acquire the music in CD quality was in 2011, in the 15th anniversary soundtrack. Better late than never, but damn. That's a long chunk of time to have only gutted 22 kilohertz copies of the music available. But back to clans. If we wander around long enough, we find a witch. I like the backdrops here. She has a whole shopping list of crap for me to go fetch for her. Bring me a feather, and one third of your quest is complete. And she hands me a sword. That already makes me not trust her. That's an insult to my people. Also, one of her requests stood out to me. Underneath the mountains live the lizards in their caves. Only a few of them have found their way to the surface, and that is a blessing for us all. Give me one of their unborn, and in return, you will get your reward. So to recap, we should be thankful these dangerous lizards haven't migrated and moved into our territory. 
Now go steal some of their unborn. Can do. I have to say, I'm giving this witch a 50-50 chance of just trying to kill me as my reward. But whatever. I get the lizard egg, and in their cave we get another example of how this game thinks. The body lights up when I hover over it. Oh, can I search him? Uh, no. I'm trying all the buttons. Do I do anything here? No, I don't think I do. It just highlights because it can. Okay. From there I had to get the feather and... Hey, this area in the mountains is actually really nice. Yeah, you've probably noticed, but I think the game utterly nailed the Diablo feel with the art. Visually, I think this game is more Diablo than the Diablo sequels themselves. I'm loving it. Same goes for the swamps to get the mushroom. These are dark, imposing woods. This is what I want to see. On the way, I run into these big furry eye things with pincers that explode when you hit them. They hurt a lot, but you can usually set off a chain reaction and run away. This is pretty creative. Although I say that because I haven't seen something like this before. It would not shock me if this is straight out of a monster manual somewhere. Any Dungeons and Dragons fans can weigh in on that one. Oh, come on, guys. If you're gonna repeat tiles like this, you gotta stagger them. So I get all the crap. Here, witch. I sense that you face disappointment at the end of your quest. Oh, wow. Is that the game's way of telling me we're gonna have a crappy ending? Come on, clans. Even if you have one, you don't give that away. In my house, you will find the key to the realm of the dead. Key to the realm of the dead. Rock on. Okay, where is it? Oh, the chest. Uh, no? Really? Yeah, it's locked. Well then, where is... Nothing else is lighting up for the cursor. What? Are you serious? You guys are seeing this, right? I clicked on it twice, it sounded locked and wouldn't open. I leave and come back, it works. Trying to make me think I'm crazy again. It's amazing for me to have this documented. Most of the time, this sort of weirdness is in a blurry memory where I wonder if I was just imagining it. But no, the spirits are with us tonight. So, yeah, maybe the game's haunted, I don't know. Great reason to head to the realm of the dead. It's just a graveyard with some skeletons running around. It's not like King's Quest VI. Now that was the realm of the dead. Well, we do what any mortal does in the land of the dead, and that's get a shovel and commence the grave robbing. It's almost a complete bust. 90% of the digs are skeletons wanting to kill you. Hello, infinite spawning, my old friend! And they chase me! Oh yeah, we're gonna be reloading. Well, we sanctify the Church of the Damned, then head onward. I will say I may have overdone it with my cautiousness, since I am flush with health potions now. I felt like anything less and I might not have made it this far. I just can't find any balance at all. King's Quarters. That means more mapping. Lots of posh marble hallways to murder monsters in. Always a good combo. The atmosphere is great, but I think they may have mixed up the audio since it really sounds like I'm in the forest. I can hear birds chirping and everything. I find some guy stuck in a wall who's freaking out telling me I need to go kill a wizard. See, again, I feel like this guy really does need my help. He's not asking me to go get his cat down out of a tree. This is a worthy request here. Now, around here, I saved and decided to come back to the game later, only to find... Uh-oh. Huh, the game crashed. That's a first. Let's try another save. Oh, jeez. Did the game just turn unstable? Okay, I can load my earlier saves. So that means I can't save from here on out? Houston, we have a problem. I'm well supplied, but I don't know how much longer the game is to do it with no more saves. Is the game even balanced for that? I doubt it is. Okay, I tried a new save file and now that one loads. Those other two are permanently corrupted, best I can tell. So this on top of everything else? Yeah, the game's haunted. Why not? This was a good pick for Halloween. I just wanted something like Diablo. I didn't realize I was summoning the real deal. Anyway, the King's Quarters is totally not balanced for no saves. I'm glad I was a stingy, optimizing bastard this whole time, too, because now I need those supplies. 
The good wizard shows up again. It is time you learn the truth about the crown and me. The crown of peace is indeed a fake, a fable made up by the elders to bind the tribes together. I should know, for I am the last of the elders. Okay, I'm sorry. He's acting like this is some big plot reveal. There's barely any story to begin with. I had to check the manual. Yeah, here's the entire story. Two CD booklet pages. They're making this up as they go. It doesn't matter. I kill a bunch of wizards who don't give me free stuff. I free the guy in the wall who's smarter than me because he decides he's done with this game after that. Outside, a flamboyant chef or somebody needs help. I'm not strong enough to fight these monsters, so could you please destroy them? Yeah, let's do it. Up in the mountains again. Nice. Yeah, I like this look. Whoa! Adding to the suspense. Well, I turn his stupid machine back on, even though I accidentally burn myself. That teleports me back. Oh, yes! Thank you! Thank you so much! <laughs> and that might be the happiest NPC I've seen. Oh, motion blur. But here's the thing. I didn't get anything from that quest. No health potions? This didn't unlock a door? In fact, I lost health doing this. I think I just got played. I mean, he doesn't even run in the direction of his workshop at the end. Now, I think I've said before, I'm actually cool with a dead-end quest with no payoff besides a thank you if it's interesting. But in this game, where I'm having to constantly scrounge and map out every single grid block? Uh-uh. This is not welcome. I'm reloading. And this next part stings, but I'm finding out kind of late that not only is the sword faster than the axe, but it does more damage. I feel kind of betrayed. I was keeping the faith with the axe this whole time, and this is how the game repays me. Plus, look at my stats. Look at how many more points I have in axe over sword, yet the sword still does more damage. It doesn't seem to affect my accuracy any. Maybe these points are a placebo and don't actually mean anything. It's possible. Assuming they do mean something, don't do what I did. Play the barbarian. Well, the view where I pick up the giant chess piece is nice, I admit. Use the chess piece, get the poison, don't drink that. Use the poison on the plant, help the badass evil looking knight. The evil looking knight betrays you, oh no! Take his sword and key, head into the, whoa! Oh, all right. I think this is the final level. Let's go. Yeah, a convenient vendor right outside the main boss. And look at that. Trying to sweet talk me with a fancy looking axe. Yeah, fine. May as well. Oh, and I was wrong again. I shouldn't have cut down all those bushes. I have way too much money left. I think money only matters if you're a magic user. In the game, I mean. So the new axe only puts me on par with the sword. See, look, two hits to take him down, two hits from the sword to take him down, and he swings it faster. And I want to remind everyone, I have the worst sword and the best axe stats in the game. Maybe I should have done the warrior since the game is so sword biased. And here we go, this is it. Hey, it's Tim Curry from Legend. You send a child to do a man's job. Wait, that's not Tim Curry. And... Okay, he killed me, but I was a little sloppy with my potions. Let's try again. And you know what? Let's give the axe one more shot. Maybe it has marginally better damage. Go, 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 go! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What happened? Oh! Are you freaking serious? Oh! I was rapid fire clicking on the boss, and the second I killed them, my clicking carried over to make me skip right through the ending. Jesus Christ! I feel like I have seen something like this before, but it's rare. Setting you up to blow right past the ending because you were clicking on the boss half a second earlier. Wow, well, let's do it again! This time I need to restrain myself and not kill the boss too hard. I've gotta kill him just right. This is gonna be tricky. Ah, he killed me, but that might be okay. I can burn another life to carefully tap him with my axe. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh yeah! By magic and by metal, by cunning and by courage, the demon is finally vanquished 
and a new hero is proclaimed. The dwarf. Grave problems, 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 problems. Oh no. Not now. Holy crap. This game is trying to take me down with it. Okay, don't panic. The movie files are accessible on the disc. So I'll convert it over and skip the interlacing while I'm at it. Boom! I don't mind seeing that again anyway. Okay, skip ahead. Problems remain. For mistrust and ignorance still divide the clans. <laughs> but so none of it mattered. The witch was right. The ending kind of sucked, but we did get to see the demon explode, so... Eh. 50-50. It's kind of on par with Diablo's ending, really. And the credits music is pretty good. I'll play some more in this episode's credits. Awards time! First award. Best Diablo look. Again, I love Diablo, but I'm not a big fan of where the series took the art direction in the sequels. Whereas visually, I felt like Clans was sort of a lost chapter from the original. The game did a great job on the look. Not the rest of it though. Second award. Sometimes the old ways are bullshit. I could be mistaken, but I think a lot of grid-based dungeon crawlers of the past wanted you to take this map or die approach to things. To put it in perspective, if you never played this game, I'm pretty sure it's impossible for you to beat it all in one go, no matter how good a player you are, even if you had a hint guide for all the puzzles. That's not true of Diablo. If you're cautious, you can maybe beat it without dying on the first time, even if you never played the game before. I mean, you probably wouldn't, but it's certainly possible. Here? No way. Okay, maybe if you played the elf and waited every single screen to recharge your mana. Maybe. But if you looked at a map and had your route planned out, then this game is easy. You. Yeah, you watching this. I don't know you, but you could probably beat this game on your first go if you followed the right path and had the instructions for that trap room, because that sucked. That's a hell of a difficulty spread. Impossible? To almost anybody can do it on their first go if they have a map. And on that note, here are all my maps all the way from the Underdark to just before the boss. It's not pretty. I only scanned these and did the bare minimum of editing to piece it together. I'm not cleaning it up any more than this. I didn't make this for you. I made this to not die. Hey, I even made a legend for you. I'll make this available as a download if you want. It's kind of trash, but it's about 97% accurate. And I think as of now is THE authoritative map for this game. And for the final award, the game is haunted. I don't always know what awards will pop up, but this one sure wasn't planned. Now I'm not afraid of ghosts, like at all. Compared to the things I've seen, ghosts are over in the kiddie pool. They're not in the deep end. But hey, if a ghost comes around and starts corrupting my save files, yeah, that gave me a scare. So, good job, ghost. And that's it for the Halloween episode. Stay tuned for the Halloween episode, where, uh, yeah, we're going back to hell.